Just know that you are leaders. And you are the ones who, by whatever means that is possible, have done this or the other. And therefore we say that as a Senate, as we begin our reflection in the next few days, as we propose solutions, far-reaching implications, answers to questions that we are being asked as a people, in both our private and public spaces, Mr. Speaker, because this conversation has not spared anybody. And it hasn't taken the traditional definitions or characterizations that we know about issues in this country. Nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with the tribe, nothing to do with class, uh, Mr. Speaker. These are unique challenges that have caught over all of us. Mr. Speaker, therefore, we request that when we get our staffers to classify the challenges as, as they will be enlisted by the various uh, members, say, for example, on the issue of uh, corruption, and this is the proposals that are being made, if our staffers can serve, serve as the rapporteurs, Mr. Speaker, so that later on when we sit to reflect and make our decisions, once we've classified all the issues into the various thematic areas, Mr. Speaker, we will retreat and reconvene as a House, Mr. Speaker, to make the various far-reaching recommendations. Whatever it is that as Parliament we need to do, if it is a change of law, we are willing to do it in record time, Mr. Speaker. And I know we have your cooperation, Mr. Speaker, and you will help us make that. If it is a resolution of the House specific to the various constitutional commissions on, and independent office holders, Mr. Speaker, we will make a resolution. Because there are two ways in which Parliament makes decisions, Mr. Speaker. We either vote on a bill or we resolve on a matter and give it as a resolution of the House. We intend to pursue whatever means it will take, Mr. Speaker, to heal the country and make us better as we are being challenged in the last few days, uh, Mr. Speaker. The country is complaining of a broken system, Mr. Speaker, that nothing works. Absolutely nothing. That this is a rigged economy where only those with proximity to power and the advantage unduly given to them by the spaces they occupy, either in public or private institutions, Mr. Speaker, are able to enjoy living in the country. And we are being asked to repair and fix it. Where this thing has reached, Mr. Speaker, it needs an overhaul. I am afraid that not the usual glue and gum that we put into areas that are leaking will solve this type. It's completely broken. If it's a pipeline, Mr. Speaker, it is time to decommission and set up a new pipeline. That's what I hear as being challenged. We are being told that everybody wants a fair shot at life and not our children to get better chances at education. Better chances, Mr. Speaker. I grew through our public education systems from primary to secondary to university, Mr. Speaker. And it was the best at that particular time. People are complaining, Mr. Speaker, that unfortunately, as it is today, nobody with a pen in this country takes their children either to public uh, primary, secondary, or even university, because it's completely finished, uh, Mr. Speaker. The picture of the primary schools that we all went to, Mr. Speaker, while it served and it worked at that particular time, public education is broken at this time. And we must make radical decisions, because, Mr. Speaker, that's what they are speaking to, and they are saying, while you guys are okay, what about the kid of the ordinary person? You know, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 when, when every time I lost sleep, as I thought through about the issues that we've uh, been through as a country, Mr. Speaker, I asked myself, where is it that we as leaders have lost touch with reality? I didn't grow up as a child of privilege, Mr. Speaker, for your information. I am 38 years old. I came to this parliament at the age of 29. The first 29 years of my life, I spent them in Eastlands, deep in the slums. I have sold Sim Sim. Like these kids you see on our streets in uh, Ngong Road as you drive, uh, Mr. Speaker. And many times when I, I see them, I reflect back and I roll down my windows and I share with them. Because I know that they are complimenting what their parents are doing. That's what sends these kids out to the streets. I know what it feels, Mr. Speaker. But why is it that when granted such an opportunity, we are not able to make it better? I believe that an opportunity to serve, Mr. Speaker, and this is what I hear us being told as the leaders, an opportunity to serve is to be reminded that we have issues, but we have looked at you and we think you have the wisdom and the ability to make it work for all of us. Can you go and serve? 
go and make it possible for the rest of us to enjoy. But unfortunately, either by design or because that is what the country is accustomed to, Mr. Speaker, when you get the first line at the queue, we don't think about the second and the third onwards, uh, Mr. Speaker. We are satisfied that so long as I've had my serving at the table, that will be enough. That's what people are complaining about, Mr. Speaker. And we are here to plead this morning that grant us the opportunity to lead the country as a Senate of Kenya in making the right and the correct decision so that we don't lose our country. I say this at this particular time, Mr. Speaker, so that people may know that in whatever we say, in whatever we do, anarchy is not an option. I'd wish to plead even to those that are leading these protests and uh, demonstrations that if Kenya was to sink, unfortunately, not even them will be spared, Mr. Speaker. And I like the fact that many of the people have begun speaking out and saying that there are certain conditions that you must meet even as a person in some of the solutions that you are prescribing. Because you listen to what is being said in the online spaces, Mr. Speaker, some of the solutions that you can clearly see, this, is, this will get us into more problems than already we are, are being unfortunately prescribed on us by people who are not within the borders of Kenya. And that's unfortunate, Mr. Speaker. But like I have said, it's not time to apportion blame and point fingers. It is time to lead the country and point them to the right direction. Because what our young people have done is that they have spectacularly perhaps painted better than Galileo could ever paint, Mr. Speaker, a picture perfect of the reality of what it means to live in the Republic of Kenya today. Nobody could have done it any better, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, it's our duty. We are duty-bound as an institution to lead. Mr. Speaker, corruption has featured prominently in this conversation. In fact, at the heart of it, perhaps finance bill was just but a trigger. But the bigger conversation that the country is having is on the issue of corruption. And what is it that we need to do? We passed a new constitution in 2010, Mr. Speaker, and we thought at that particular time that we had finally succeeded to slay the dragon of corruption because this is a challenge that as a country we've dealt with the last 60 years or 50 uh, Mr. Speaker. But the question that people are saying is that instead of actually uh, getting better despite the fact that we have uh, created independent offices, Mr. Speaker, it has become worse. ESCC has crafted, and that's a conversation that uh, we will need to have as a house. And eventually, Mr. Speaker, something that we haven't resolved at this point is when we have the thematic area, shall we resolve them as a committee of the whole, there's a big thinking that says, given the national importance of this conversation, we cannot even relegate it to the committees. There are those that hold a slightly different view, and we will, we will, we will, we will take time to reflect, and I am willing to be persuaded as I listen to my colleagues when they'll be speaking on this issue, Mr. Speaker, whether we deal with it as a committee of the whole. Because we must invite ESEC here, Mr. Speaker. And they must tell us, Mr. Speaker, why is it that we are not succeeding? Is it the law? What is it, Mr. Speaker? What do we need to do as a country? Because what we know for sure is that the system has set up, even this design in our counties, Mr. Speaker, of saying you have an ethics and anti-corruption officer at, 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 at every county, Mr. Speaker. Basically, what it takes is that they are quickly captured, Mr. Speaker, and they become appendages of the corrupt system in our various counties, Mr. Speaker. The same can be said nationally. And this issue, Mr. Speaker, if we were to be honest, and I'd wish that the country also indulges us, is that corruption is not only a problem of leaders. It's a national problem. It's a values problem that we have as a people. We cannot just speak, Mr. Speaker, about what leaders are doing without taking time to consider and say, how do we demonetize our politics, Mr. Speaker? How do we make politics less influenced and infiltrated by the power of money, Mr. Speaker. Because unless and until a country has that conversation, Mr. Speaker, I am afraid we are not likely to win this uh, conversation. And part of the proposal that must come out of here, Mr. Speaker, is the process of removing money out of our politics, Mr. Speaker. That has destroyed the fabric of our society. And I like the fact that listening to the President the other day, he said, and this is something that, a conversation that many of us have had many times, 
that even this issue of harambe is the way it's being uh, done mr speaker this presentation of resources mr speaker that perhaps it's time to ban it from us as public officials so that when i go before people i tell them about policies that i have made to make their life better not the two million shillings that i'm carrying in my car to give them to build a classroom for them uh, mr speaker that's a challenge that we must be willing to accept because mr speaker until and i must repeat until we demonetize our politics uh, mr speaker and the space of influence it will continue to be a gold rush and the desire uh, mr speaker on every member you know that people don't know that the cycle of and the life of a politician in this country it involves running monday to thursday collecting as much as you can only to go and spend it on friday to sunday and in fact most of that money mr speaker it doesn't even get to the houses of these members people don't know if a member makes perhaps a million within a week they'll be very lucky if a hundred thousand makes it to do anything in their house 900 of that money goes back to the constituency therefore we must remove that demand and this desire to see members of parliament and politicians and people who are in public offices mr speaker as if they are tools for pushing resources and money until we we do that but that's not that's 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 just the effect what we need to address here today is a structural fight and those that are in the justice and um, uh, mr speaker law and order society that they must come here and we must reveal to each other and tell each other why is it difficult ESCC must appear before us mr speaker and they must tell us this is what we need to do so that we know mr speaker why is it we are now in the third cycle of county governments mr speaker everybody knows why people can almost kill each other to be county governors mr speaker but we don't have a solid case not one not one before any courts of law that can point out and say this is what we have done as an institution so that people know this is what we are doing we will be willing mr speaker because this has featured prominent we are being even challenged mr speaker as an institution on the things that we have done and said and the laws that we have passed we must make it difficult it must pain people mr speaker to break the system after we repair it it must the, the, the punishment must be punitive mr speaker so that it gets to a point where people fear you know people don't fear to be corrupt in this country because they know what is the worst that will happen i will be taken to court i will pay a bail and i will walk scot free chances are i'll enjoy that money until i die yes he must come to us mr speaker and tell us even these new jurisprudence that they are trying to establish where somebody steals a billion then says i am willing to part with 300 million and we we, we remove the case unless we didn't read properly but good leaders i have said this is not the time to apportion blame if there are things that they want us to change is it their budget is it the law as we defined it mr speaker let us listen with an open mind and say tell us what it is that will respond to this uh, particular issue mr speaker the judiciary also has been very silent while all this has been going in fact the only thing i've seen the chief justice speak about was on the issue of uh, abductions and i think later on when her chambers were raided she issued a statement or something uh, to that effect but listening into what we are being told and the conversation going around part of the broken system is our judicial system mr speaker people know mr speaker that even if you are taken to court you can find your way around it mr speaker that you can buy uh, justice a country that sells its justice mr speaker is not a country if i know that all it takes for me to get away with murder mr speaker is sufficient resources in my bank account then that is not a country judicial service commission mr speaker just like us and all of us that are in positions of responsibility mr speaker must engage and be willing to guide us and say this is what has happened if you listen as people were speaking people have shared their experiences how they have been disinherited of properties that were left by their parents because a rich person showed up mr speaker and as orphaned children they could not put up a fight before our courts of law that is not the foundation of a judicial system mr speaker 
And we need time to reflect. JSC must tell us what is it that we need to do, uh, Mr. Speaker. Equal opportunities has featured prominently. Many people are saying, we know that all it will take for you to get unemployment anywhere is to our people of influence. We have constitutionally mandated institutions, Mr. Speaker, NCIC, and so many others. Let's see the studies that they have done so far out of the millions that we have sent to them over the years. Are they just collecting per diems and traveling to Naivasha? Or they have done a scientific study that can help us to appreciate. You know, the problem in this country, Mr. Speaker, is that people love proposing half solutions. And that's what we are being told, that that is not enough. It is not just enough to tell us that this community has this percentage of jobs, this one has the other. Can you make recommendations? And we are willing to come and pass a resolution of the House, Mr. Speaker. If it is established, Mr. Speaker, that the community that I come from has more than an equal share of opportunities, Mr. Speaker, in the various cadres and levels of government, Mr. Speaker. Let's pass a resolution here and say that until such a time that others get an opportunity, equitably, uh, Mr. Speaker, we don't give chance to those because, but unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, listening and reading the reports that have come from NCIC, it is so basic and, and uh, it's like the person who designed it just wanted to appease people with little facts here and there, Mr. Speaker. Oh, Kikuyus have this percentage, Luos have the other. That's not enough. Break it down. Work like a serious institution. Tell us how many CEOs exist in public service. Give us their distribution. How many uh, senior level managers exist? How many are ordinary clerks, Mr. Speaker? We could be talking about a particular community that has a certain share, Mr. Speaker. But they are all clerks and drivers. It's not the same. We need a more detailed study so that you lead us as a house into making this conversation. I'm trying to rush, Mr. Speaker, because I know time is not on our side. Governance on our value systems, Mr. Speaker, featured prominently in this conversation. And we must put it either by law, by design. What is it that you do as a public official when certain things are said about you? How is it, Mr. Speaker, that in certain countries... That you as a public official, even when you are just accused of having an extramarital affair, forget about stealing public resources. The system is so advanced that you are challenged and are told, Mr. XYZ, if you cannot be faithful even to your partner, you cannot be faithful to, your current, uh, to, to, to the country, that your character has been found wanting. And people are asked to step aside on such occasions and people do the honorable thing and say, I think I no longer enjoy the trust of the people. Allow me to pursue other things. On personal matters, I'm not talking about uh, public issues, Mr. Speaker. The problem with us is even when we have been challenged on public issues, Mr. Speaker, we still want to stick and die until, you know, the famous quote that somebody once said, I'd rather die than resign. On debt, Mr. Speaker, I have a certain level of risk, uh, reprieve as a person, but it still doesn't help me. Like I said, these young people don't care, and the people that are speaking don't care, because on the two occasions that the debt question appeared before this house the last time, I voted against it, both to move it at $6 trillion and eventually when we moved it to $10 trillion, uh, Mr. Speaker. But that doesn't help. That's history. We can point fingers and say, you moved, you did this or the other. It doesn't matter at this point. The thing we are being told first, Mr. Speaker, is that when Kenyans look keenly, they are trying to locate 10 trillion in the country, and they cannot see it. So they're asking, are you sure, first of all, that we owe 10 trillion? And I have made public confessions, Mr. Speaker. Those that served with us in the Budget and Finance Committee last time, Mr. Speaker, no. That when we asked for Kenya's debt register, it was brought to us on an Excel sheet. No records beyond that. And you're being told, company, this, you owe them this much, this is the rate at which you borrowed, and so on and so forth. It pointed out to a problem. In fact, on the day that I made my contribution and said that I re reject this approval of the debt, uh, raising of the debt ceiling to 10 trillion, that's part of the reasons that I raised that afternoon, Mr. Speaker. And I said, 
until parliament has a counter copy of what the treasury is borrowing uh, mr speaker and we rearrange that whole space of our debt mr speaker we are not yet out of the woods therefore i don't want to spend a lot of time on the issue of debt mr speaker but we are being told that a public audit of our debt situation mr speaker is mandatory at this particular point and i know the executive will do this but even us as parliament because it's us who failed in that regard we must carry out our own so that we counter check with what the executive is doing parliamentary budget office can lead this exercise but if they need the expertise of other audit firms including international reputable established institutions that can help us in this conversation people who know about multilateral lending mr speaker and going to the financial markets because there are issues of eurobond there in and other institutions that we are borrowed from mr speaker let us have that conversation so that we know first of all mr speaker what is our debt exposure look at even the debt ceiling uh, change of law that we did earlier makes sense we argued and said we want to change how we calculate our debt uh, as status mr speaker as opposed to having it as a static number make it as a percentage of the gdp because that's a more globally accepted standard and that's fine and i supported that motion mr speaker and we said in three years time we want to bring our debt sustainability to 55 percent of the gdp it is now at 61 we have three years but what is the plan mr 